Well, it is time for uh, another the opening of another log. It is 16 hours and 6 minutes into the 10th day of December. <clears throat> if I'm thinking correctly, it depends on where my mind is at. No, it's the 9th day of December. <clears throat> As I said before, when you go to bed to get some rest to... Uh, and wake up on the same day, you tend to think an entire day has gone by. But that's not the case. Uh, but we do have a package opening. Uh, for the op This is the opening vlog for Wednesday. So let's get this package opened. See what it is. Product in styrofoam, so I really don't know what it is. Okay. Well, that phone that I have there, these are glass covers. They're they're. Uh, it's a protective covering for the uh, for the phone. Okay, I see here. Okay, okay. So it's hard to see, but these are this is a protective covering for the phone. It's a hard plat. It's a hard plat. It's almost like a plexiglass. So I will have to, uh, after this, uh, uh, basically, um, ooh, clean off the glass uh, with some Windex that I have and uh, put that on so that the phone is protected. <clears throat> so that's, that's how that's going to go. And. I'm still doing the dishes. That's what the, the, the machine. The machine that I got, the the, the device I got, with it's an ultrasonic uh, transducer. <clears throat> creates sonic waves that cleans within the uh, within the dishwasher. That's what creates the dishwasher. So all you need is a sink or a tub, and then you now have a cleaning environment. So I said I do have a lot of back, a uh, lot of dishes that are left undone. Uh, this is just you, the way things go is that sometimes there's not a lot of time to do dishes. You do the essentials so that you can keep uh, sort of keep a, a basic functionality. But otherwise, uh, a lot of stuff is left on the side. And so uh, this helps you keep up. It helps you, uh, well, this is what I'm doing now, clearing the backlog anyway. So uh, uh, yay for that. But it's going to take a while because uh, there's so much that's there. Uh, it's probably going to end up taking me in a month to sort of get the, to to bring the situation to current, so where the backlog is cleared off and there's no more of an issue. Uh, and then the, the most of my places like that. The most of the places that I have to develop workarounds for cleaning to make sure that it's a, it's efficient as it's possible, just because there's so little time to do everything. There's so much to get done and so little time that you really do have to sort of uh, make efficient use of your time during projects. And if these little gadgets will sort of do that for you, uh, then uh, that's a great way of doing things. And so uh, that's what this little device does. It, it does uh, a large chunk of the cleaning for me. I'm here. I'm doing this now. Uh, it's cleaning. Uh, it's on its off cycle now. Uh, when I get off, when I'm finished here, I'll go back to my meditation. I'm finished the gaming, but right now I'm still in meditation. <coughs> And when I'm done my meditation, I'll go back and do another run uh, uh, with the machine. Uh, the machine operates for 15 minutes, and you leave it off for an hour, and then you put it back on again for 15 minutes, and repeat until everything is clear. And I notice that the sink is getting cleaner. There is, uh, it, it is doing the job cleaning, but it's, it, it's doing it a thin layer at a time. So it's going to take multiple uh, uh, attempts to clean everything off. So... 
Uh, not upset with that. Uh, either rather pleased. And uh, things are, uh, are going fairly well. It's just what happens is that sometimes, you know, you have understandings of things, but other people don't necessarily have these understandings. And, you know, most people tend to look at the government guidelines as being something uh, sacrosanct, that the, the government's always telling the truth. But the reality is the government is not necessarily always telling you the truth. And so what happens is when they get uh, you have these police officers sort of uh, <laughs> policing social media, they don't necessarily know what they're doing. And they make mistakes that they shouldn't be making, but the thing is, you got to understand that, that the police, and this is the same thing that's true with, with Ferguson or any of these so-called issues of police abuse, this is the, sort of the central matter of Black Lives Matter, most of the police who are hired by the local politicians, that means your, means your mayor, the standards for which the police are hired are set by the mayor, not by the president or anyone else. It's done by the mayor. They know and have known that they're hiring the lowest capable people around. So you're going to have people who, who, who don't know the law, who are told to enforce their authority, who, who feel that they have the right and, and, and the necessity to enforce their authority, and so they're not going to work to, to, to try to calm the situation now or to back out of a deadly situation. Their thing is, oh, you've made a mistake, we're going to take you to jail, and bang, and that's it. And if you defied my authority, and it's, 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 it's ironically enough, this this is was p portrayed in uh, South Park years ago uh, when you had uh, uh, Cartman uh, the, 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 dressed up as a cop, and his, and his whole line was "Respect my authority." You know, this is standard for policing today. Standard for policing today is respect my authority, and that's it. And it's nothing more than that. And, and I think the the mayors understand this. The mayors know this. They understand what, what the police are. And they have the power to change it, but they never do. Because a lot of these Black Lives Matter was aimed at Donald Trump, but Donald Trump didn't have anything to do with local policing. That's the mayor. So the Black Lives Matter, is, uh, they hit the wrong people. They should have been aiming, if, if, if these Antifa people and Black Lives Matter were really seeking to change things, they would have hit the mayor. Not Donald Trump. Even if it was Biden up there, Biden has nothing to do with local policing. It's the uh, it's it's the mayor. If you want to see what where, where you have problems with your local policing with police brutality, talk to your mayor. That's where it is. the The responsibility for policing and the police behavior stops with the mayor. Starts and stops with the mayor. If you have a problem with the policing, you have a problem with the mayor. That's your that's your point of the that's your that's your where your resolution is. If you can't get it done peacefully, then if you feel you need to go out and riot and um, uh, bring violence to the case, then then the mayor is your target. And nobody else is your target, just the mayor. It is four o'clock in the morning once again. It's three hours and fifty minutes into now the tenth day of December, uh, two thousand twenty. In the background, you can hear I got my wa uh, the washing machine. The, uh, the dishwasher is still going, still doing its job. There is an awful lot to get through, uh, but with these upgrades, I'm getting to the point where I am making progress on a weekly basis. How long this is going to keep up? I'm not too sure. This is kind of new for me. Uh, in new territory, if I can do upgrades every two, you know, uh, move into new territory every every uh, two weeks, that would be good because I'm doing it right now once a month. Uh, weekly is significant, a significant improvement, but uh, uh, but every two weeks is fine as well as if, if it falls back to two weeks. Uh, then yay, I'm happy for that as well because uh, right now I'm in something known as an oscillating sleep mode. Uh, it occurs when there's a lot of stuff to do, but at the same time, you don't actually have to go anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere for the last couple of days, and 
it's supposed to give you extra time to sleep to, to, to sort of correct your sleep uh, pattern because uh, I spend weekends uh, doing an all-nighter. Uh, from Saturday to Sunday, it's one whole day. Uh, even though it is supposedly two days, uh, I don't sleep Saturday nights. Uh, I, uh, no, I actually sleep on the, I sleep on the chair. Uh, and then I'm up uh, around 7 o'clock on Sunday morning. So there's no real sleep until after I get back. And sometimes I have to game, and depending on what I have to do, uh, I don't end up getting back to bed until like, close to 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, right now I'm sort of shutting down. I'm going to be shutting down in about a uh, half hour, 45 minutes. Because uh, I do have some gaming to do. But today, in terms of the oscillating mode, is you're awake for a bit, you're asleep for a bit. You're awake for a bit, you're asleep for a bit. And the idea was, I was lucid dreaming today, as I always, as I always do. And, and the dreams kind of stay, as I said, the dreams stay with you, even though you're awake, you remember what goes on, you remember uh, how you interacted, what the uh, sort of the feelings were, uh, some of the things you need to correct some of the, in terms of your own behavior. Uh, these things always come into play. They always sort of become part of uh, your over, overall uh, uh, construct for the day that you have to do, that you have to sort of get through. Some of the things you'll be successful at, some of the things you won't be successful at, is really a mishmash of, of, of even emotions, because you don't always know what you're going to succeed at or what you're not going to succeed at. And so uh, it does represent a, a, a degree of a challenge in terms of whether or not you will be successful at uh, dealing with issues uh, that sort of pop up within the dreams. And that's that the dreams are, dreams reveal not simply a prediction of what's going to happen in the future, but primarily it gives you an insight to your own behavior into various issues that you have, uh, you know, say jealousies, anger, this or that, uh, sadnesses, uh, uh, even depression. All these things kind of pop up. All your emotions pop up in your dreams, and you can sort of see where your issues are. And sometimes you'll be able to successfully work on the issues and, and sort of move forward. Other times you won't, and it's sort of a combination of things. Sometimes you can work on it for and, and seem as if you've made progress, but then something uh, is, is presented in your dream, a scenario, is present, a scenario or, or an event is presented in your dream, and you have an adverse reaction, a reaction that you never really sort of expected to have, because uh, you've gotten over... You, you, you know, from what you what you understood is you got over that particular, but it, as it's presented in a different manner, it's just that you got over it in one sense in, in terms of how it's uh, given to you, but in another sense, it could be that the issue could still be there and be significant. Sometimes you may never get over the get over the sort of the issue that you have. There's maybe things that are just sort of beyond what your capacity is in terms of, of, of dealing with. And then you have to sort of figure out, well, how, how are you going to deal with it? How are you going to deal with uh, the issue that, that, that presents itself? And, and that can be, that could be a, 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 a challenge as well. Uh, in many cases, I feel like even though things are progressing well, uh, I'm in somewhat of a new environment to, to sort of how things are set up. That even though things have gone well and things are progressing, when you look at the total amount of work that actually has to be done, uh, I feel like there's so much I don't know how I'm going to finish it all. So I just go my 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 dealing with this is simply well, I'm not going to pay attention to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the things I'm working on now, and just, you know, take it a bit of time, you know, segment by segment, and do what I can. Uh, if I don't finish everything I need to finish, then, well, that's the way it is. You know, you try to do your best, you try to do, to do uh, what you can do, but that's, 
there's only so much that you can do and then the rest of the time you just kind of fall back and say well this is it this is as far as I go and it's daunting it, 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 when you've gone through things for a long time it's daunting to see the the, the the potential end and how things will end up, how things will end. And of course, in this environment now is that we, there's a lot of change going on, and people are frightened with this change, and they're not necessarily excited for what's going to come. Uh, we are in a period of history that's repeating itself because his events, in, events that we consider current and immediate, we don't necessarily understand that there's been this, this, uh, these events in the past. And right now we're living through a period we thought, it was, oh, this is brand new. Well, it's not really brand new. This is what it was in the 1930s. And so we're replaying a large chunk of what was done in the 1930s. We're re replaying it again. And a large chunk of the, 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 the result of it is going to not going to be very nice. Uh, yet we still do have to persevere through whatever challenges come our way. And, and, and again, this is, has nothing to do with a sense of worth or anything like that. This is simply just, some, you know, again, the biggest question, the biggest task is perseverance and, and nothing more. Anyways, uh, I'm going to leave that here for now and uh, see you in uh, tomorrow's vlog. This is uh, going to be uh, my closeout. Uh, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs>
how ignorant people can be. But the thing is, is that you would use the term ignorant, but at some point in time, if a person remains ignorant long enough, it becomes a state of, uh, uh, they become a moron. A moron is a progressive term developed in the 1930s uh, and, and before to describe a person who is not uh, mentally capable of thinking and fending for themselves. In other words, other people have to think for them. They're the, called the more superior or the, or the the, the properly minded, that were called the high minded, and I, and these were this was done by top scientists and do, top doctors. That they, they were fully convinced of this. They were convinced that dark people and anyone who was dark skinned were not properly human. They were sub. They were uh, undermentioned. They were the the subhuman. Of course, uh, this interfered with the top scientists and doctors who were trying to uh, bring uh, humanity to the. Uber mentioned the Superman to make them a more enhanced human. This is what's going on now. They're, we're back to trying to create the, uh, not the, well, they don't say, oh, we're not, it's not the Uber mentions, it's not the Superman. We're going to create an enhanced human being <laughs> via genetic engineering. And because all these things are all genetic, And genes can't be changed from their perspective. Well, of course, the people who have defective genes, such as these morons, idiots, and feeble-minded. And ironically enough, it was considered to be that that women were feebly minded. This is why they need needed minders and caretakers. My grandmother, uh, who was a who was a widow, needed an uncle or or, or some other male relative of age to. Uh, Deal all, deal with all her finances because she couldn't go. Even though she worked, she held, she uh, she owned the house that she that she was in. She still, in order to renew her mortgage and all these other different things, she had to have a male relative act on her behalf because uh, women were uh, rated by top scientists and doctors to be feebly minded. And the the government supported this. There, there were people who who were thoroughly in the government who were thoroughly convinced of this. Black people, dark people, people who weren't of the proper color. That's, again, of course, this gives you my last name. Uh, my last name is Katathanasis, and the Kata part is the same is the same word that you see is C A R, and then it should be double R. But the, the way they spell it in terms of uh, the word and the use of it is called car, uh, you know, caramel, right? Caramel, you know, the term the word caramel, C A R A M. E I L. That's caramel. Right? The mel is the honey, the Greek word for honey. The kata is the Greek word for dark, for burnt. So this is, you get with the caramel, you get a burnt honey, or a dark honey, and that's what my last name means. It means uh, I, uh, is, is is translated into Tom in English, and so I am a dark Thomas <laughs> or dark the dark Tom. Uh, and there are people with, with a name like Mavroyanis. Mavroyanis is a black. It, Mavros is black, and the word Yani is is uh, J uh, Johnny in English. So it's, uh, it's Black Johnny or Black John. And so you had these names often indicating the color of the person and whether or not they were properly within society in terms of their race and breeding. Breeding was a huge factor in 1930, to the point where they were sterilized. Anyone who was classified as a moron, as an idiot, <clears throat> were sterilized to prevent the the defective gene of this whole issue from from spreading. They oh, we got to stop this these morons and, and idiots. We don't want any more of them. They need so much help, and so they said, okay, we'll sterilize them, and that's. Actually, the whole comedy of the Three Stooges, which most people think, oh, it's just simply slapstick. Look at when it was done. It was done in the 1930s. It actually wasn't a TV show. It was a movie reel. It was uh, part of these short movies that they used to play at these uh, these movie theaters. And if you wanted entertainment, like like your cartoons or anything like that, you went to a movie theater. That's the way it was in the 1930s. Uh, my dad, who was in 19, born in 1937, remembers... Um, 
uh, rounding up as many Coke bottles as he can, these, the glass bottles, and returning them, because uh, they all had a deposit on it, he could, and they would get enough money that he could spend the entire afternoon, uh, Saturday afternoon, uh, at the movie theaters, uh, watching reel after reel, you know, watching these short movies. And uh, about them with Three Stooges, you have Tom and Jerry, you had uh, most of the Warner Brothers characters, uh, Bugs Bunny, uh, Yosemite Sam, all these these people came out of these these older movies. It wasn't TV. And this is where the history comes into. This. History matters. And when we begin to realize what's happening now, that a large chunk of these so-called liberals who are out there for people's equality aren't actually arguing for equality. What they're doing is they're supporting this eugenics program that's coming back in again. We're back in a time of eugenics. We're back in the 1930s again. And people are, because of their genetic disposition, and they're, not they're no longer classified as human beings, as were the blacks, the browns, and, the, and at some point in time, the Jews were, were added onto that list. Uh, and that's what ended up with Auschwitz, how you ended up with top doctors and scientists creating Auschwitz. Six million Jews died. Well, you went, you, you went on Google, everybody who, who, who ended up dying, you had more than uh, uh, 150 million people were, were dispatched and, and eliminated through these eugenics programs. It ended with Hitler and the death camps. It was going on long before then, though. Hitler came into all this near the end. And right now, we're back at the beginning. We're back in the 1930s. We're back before Hitler arises and wipes out all these people. And we hear from the UN how, what a great idea, we're, we're going to save the earth, we're going to save, reduce the carbon footprint, by how? By eliminating people. And you have the liberals supporting this. You have the Democrats supporting this. They're supporting war, they're supporting, you know, the, the conflicts around the world. They're supporting the, the transport of women into Europe. The largest de destination for all these trafficked women is Europe. That's where the open sexual open sexual uh, rules are. That's where the laws are more enlightened. Well, how is it more enlightened if you're trafficking the more women? In, in other words, more women, more children are being trafficked as slaves into Europe than ever before. It's on a, a record level. And this is what the Democrats are supporting? This is what the liberals are supporting? At some point in time, if you shut your eyes and don't want to see, at some point in time, because you're not using your eyes, you will not see. You cannot see. So ignorance goes into, becomes moronacy. Moronic. Yeah, well, let's call it moronacy. They become, they, the, the, the ignorant become moronic. And this is what's happened. A lot of the Democrats, really simply at this point in time, those who support the Democrats, so those who support the Liberals, don't seem to be able to make the connection that they're supporting something that's very, very wrong. Why would you ever want to support someone who is advocating eliminating people? Trump isn't doing that. He's not going up there and saying, oh, we should eliminate so-and-so. He's not doing it. As a matter of fact, he stopped a large chunk of the regime change. The regime change that everybody hated, Trump stopped. And he was working on reducing more, but he's got a lot of pressure from people, even on the Republican. That's why the Republican Party didn't like him, is because he was stopping the wars. He was ending regime change. But this was not good for them. And so they turned the entire United States and most of the world against them. If you sat down and looked past what was going on in the media, what was being said in the media, you'd see that there were less wars going on. Ukraine had slowed down, um, you know... Syria had slowed down. There was the fighting in the Middle East had slowed down. Now, with Donald Trump and Biden almost uh, at the point of losing, no one knows what's going to happen now, but Biden certainly is sort of pushing ahead. Well, the Republicans have pushed Trump into the corner and now are going to be able to do whatever they want to do. In other words, we're going back to the wars. Back to regime change. This is what the Democrats vote. This is what the liberals vote for. You said you're anti-war, you're, you're, you're pro-humanity. How is more war helping humanity? How does more war help women? How is this feminism with having more war? Women are victimized sexually and beyond 
during warfare. And you're increasing this. How are you a feminist? If you're there for increasing war, which, which has a very heavy, very negative impact on women. But these people are all high-minded. They all consider themselves to be educated. And they'll ignore anything that's put in front of them that, 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 that counters their thoughts and their views. And yet they're calling themselves liberal and open-minded. And this is the, this is the reality. This is certainly what, this is the case that's going on right now. 